Good morning, everyone. Today, I would like to give everyone a very brief intro to how to hold the mala beads. As everyone can see, this is one of my formal practice mala beads. This mala beads contain 108 beads in this uh, player beads. And this uh, player beads already been purified, been blessed, and that has been doing the practice for years with these mala beads. So for most of you lay practitioner, your mala beads maybe you will buy from online shop or someone give you or sometimes is your master give you as a gift. So these mala beads, no matter are 108 mala beads or 21 mala beads, they are all considered mala beads. But as a formal practice, mala beads is a 108, the long mala beads like I'm holding right now. So when you do the mantra chanting, the mala beads you need to hold from the beginning of the mala beads, which we say this is the beginning of the mala when we chant in the mantra. So the finger-wise, how can you actually hold in the malas? If you are doing informal mantra chanting, you can hold the mala beginning from either the head of the mala beads or any part of the mala. It's okay, as your own wish. Because in the Buddha Dhamma's teaching, everything arousing with the cause and condition. It means there's no true beginning. There's no true ending. Every second, microsecond of the moment can become a initiation at that moment. So it means in the informal practices, you can begin your mala chanting with your mala without any restriction. Just do as free as you can go. So if you do the informal practice, usually your mala, you will put on your hand so you can carry and you can walk around, do anything, and that you can casually to chant a mantra when you have free time. And the formal mala beads like I'm holding right now, actually we do at uh, formal practices or formal mantra chanting, but we also sometimes will using our own mala beads as casual practices occasion as well. So now I'm going to instruct the formal practices how you should hold your mala beads. This is according to our tradition. So I wish uh, can give you some beneficial information which you can do during your practice. So we holding the malas beginning from the mala bead head. And we begin the first mala counting, not from the head, actually is from the first mala beat next to the mala beat head. So for instance, if I chant Om Mani Bei Hong, I will just count once. If I continue chanting the second time, Om Mani Bei Hong, then I'll count the second time. If I continue chanting the third times of a mantra, Om Mani Bei Mei Hong, I will count third, and the fourth, and the fifth, continuous, until I finish one complete 108 times of uh, mala chanting. So, for instance, if I reach to 108 times, then I will just 
reaching to the end of this mala, which I begin from the first mala next to the mala beats head. So after you chant 108 times, conclude. This is a complete one time of a 108 times of mantra chanting. So what you need to do is, because you already go to the end, so in the formal mantra chanting and the formal holding the mantra beats, we do not cross over the mantra beats head, this big one. We will turn around our mala and continue to do 108. Om Mani Me Hong, the first mantra chanting. Om Mani Me Hong, second time of mantra chanting. Om Mani Me Hong, third time of mantra chanting. Continue this until complete the finish 108 times. So this is a second times of completion of 108 times. So for some of our mantra chanting practices, we will need to accumulate up to a hundred thousand times of the mantra chanting. So maybe some of you, the formal mantra chanting practitioner, you ask me how actually you can come. You can come as a simple way, right on the paper. You can do just vertical one, 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 four times, and the one cross, like consider five. So that is one of the method you can do. If you are doing some special pujas, some special practice, which require the official numbers of completion of mantra, you need to do the calculation. And for most of the formal practitioner, sometimes we will use this type of a tool. So if we count 108 times, then we will move one. We will count this one and add in more and continue this counting until we reach to 100,000 times and we finish formal mantra chanting practices. So. The reason why sometimes we will do the formal practice is conclude the 100,000 times of mantra chanting. And sometimes we need to conclude 500,000 times of the mantra chanting. Sometimes we need to do a million thousand times of the mantra chanting. It's because according to some of the sutra, or some of the Buddhist formal practices, these are all obligated need to be concrete, consider part of the formal practices. So here I'm not going to give some actual example because uh, most of this practice cannot be disclosed or discussed in public. So, and as most of you are the informal mantra practitioner or informal practitioner, you can just buy or get the small short one you can put around your head and you can do any mantra chanting during your walking, your free time and even sometimes when you're talking to your friend you still can practice your mind chanting the mantra with the tool of the mantra beats with your hand so that also can practice your focus after conclude, doesn't matter it's 21 times of mantra or 108 times of mantra. When each time of the chanting mantra, you need to do a conclusion. For instance, you only have three minutes. You only have time to do 21 times of mantra chanting. At 21 times of mantra chanting, if you do the informal mantra chanting practice, then you can just simply use your mind to delegate all the merits to the sixth wrong ascension being, to those people you wish to dedicate merits to, or dedicate to the obstacles removal if you are facing one yourself. So no matter is informal practice or formal practice, it's very important you do the dedication. 
if informal practices, for instance, you are walking outside, right? It's very busy, so you will forget to do the dedication during the time when you're chanting the mantra. So what you can do, you can do at the night time before you go to bed. So you can do this dedication. Dedication is like a saving the money to the bank. Dedication using another very casual example is like a, everyone making very hard work in order to make the money. So money, you're afraid if you save at home, you get robber or some thief will steal the money from you. So you save in the bank. So once you put the money in the bank, then you mentally you feel very secure. Dedication is the same thing. It's like when you're chanting the 21 times of mantra over 108 times of mantra. The very simple is once you do the dedication of the merits, then it means all the merits you generate is safely, forever, permanently safeguard in your merits bank. It means these merits, these virtues, is going to carry on the forward with you, not only in the moment of the day or the future year, this turn of life, also will bring these merits and virtue to next future lives until you attain the final enlightenment. So that's why it's very important to conclude your prayer. Doesn't matter if it's a formal or informal, in a very secure way as a delicate merits. And the how to enhance your delegation will be successful and the safeguard and it will never disappear is you need to delegate to six strong sentient beings, arousing the benefit of others. Once you have this kind of very, very broad view to care about others' suffering, then your merits, your virtues, is 100% secure and a safeguard by all 10 directions of Buddhas and Bodhisattva. It will never disappear, it will never fade away. It's preserved forever. As I beginning of this uh, teaching, I share with you how to hold the malas. And at the end, how you should put your mala is you need to roll up organizedly like this and you put on the table. Okay, let's say if you have a clean office table or a bookshelf in your living room, somewhere is clean, not mixed with some dining dishes or some dirty stuff. Somewhere clean or next to your sutra text and you organize your mala this way or this way or this way. Doesn't matter how you organize the mala, just organize it and put on a clean location. Then you are perfectly to best use of the mala base for your practice. And the your mala base not only chanting the mantra with you, they also receiving the blessing from the deities. For instance, if you chant Om Mani Padme Hum, Guan Yin Bodhisattva's uh, six syllables of mantra, then your malas also embrace this blessing from the Guan Yin six syllables and mantra also. So that is what I wish to share with you to deepen some of your knowledge about how to best use of a mala base for your practice. And I wish you enjoy. And uh, remember, please subscribe our channel, share our video, and uh, click the like and the thumb up for the video you enjoy. So we will read your feedback and we will generate more video to suit your need in the future. Thank you.